Hello, my name is Dr. Arthur McClunu. I've dedicated my life to providing surgical care to patients with heart disease. My life began in the slums of Soweto in South Africa, where I learned to overcome adversity and illnesses, including the death of my best friend. That's why I want to be a resource for you and your family for consultation related to heart and cardiovascular needs. You can learn more about me by visiting my website, which is at ZuluChessCutter.com. Entertainment show. <clears throat> we'll take you live from the Society Lounge, 8229 Georgia Avenue, Silver Spring, Maryland. And uh, my co host, Mr. Selfie Palmer, Wilbur Skipper, is taking a break. So I'm holding it down right now as a solo artist. I hope it all goes well as Sherry Cook laughs at me over there. <laughs> Nonetheless, hey folks, welcome back to the show. Of course, I'm your host, Roland Bubba Grimes. Uh, Miss Sherry Cook is uh, to my far right, and she is someone who is involved with helping the young man in the middle uh, launch his not-for-profit and reach out to the community and do some positive things in this area, especially for the youth. So do me a favor if you would. Put your hands together for Miss Sherry Cook and Mr. Timon Gates. Now, I want to say, I want to make sure I pronounce his name correctly. Taiwan, Taiwan, how would I do it? Uh, it's Taiwan. Taiwan. Yes, yeah, I knew that. I was checking to see if he knew it. <laughs> All right. Taiwan, I'm going to start with you. For whatever reason, you decided that you wanted to do some stuff in this community to help enhance the life of young people between the ages of 13 and 25, so to speak. Right. Why that population? What is it about that age group that is so important to you? Well, because, you know, things really start to uh, deteriorate, uh, deteriorate right. hit the fan, if you will, around, <clears throat> around 13. And 25, you still are still kind of trying to find your way. Like, there's some things that you understand, and there's some things that you still need to understand about how life really operates as an adult. Because a lot of the times we get... You know, we get our spiritual guidance from our religious following. We get our ABCs and one, two, threes from school, but nobody really teaches us how to manage those life skills, those life, skills, how to pay the bills and what to do when the bills are late and what, what to do when we lose our job, things of that nature. Okay. Sherry, what is the name of the organization? It's the Life Starts Here Mentoring Program. Life Starts Here Mentoring? Yeah. Okay. And how long has it been in existence? Well, um, we've been blessed that uh, Taiwan came up with the um, idea and everything, uh, but who? It's been about three months. About, about three, three months. months. Yeah, about three months ago uh, in November of last year. As a matter of fact, I was uh, working my job. I've been there five and a half years, and at the, at the, they let me know right after Barack Obama got elected they, that, that they weren't uh, bringing me back because I was waiting on a clearance and things of that nature. So um, in the midst of that, I had an 80-page dissertation due, so um, God just spoke to me and said, hey, um, you really have been wanting to work with the youth, so here's your opportunity, and it's it's been, it's been laid out for me. It's been and it's been beautiful. So we're just and excited the to get started. Will oh, the sessions will begin in March, March. Correct. Okay. So now this 80-page dissertation was for what? It was for the completion of my master's in computer security management. Okay. Super. Now, in March, you're going to start sessions doing what? 
uh, during the week. It'll be uh, it's a ten week um, life. Life is an, is an acronym for Living Involves Full Effort. Um, so it's a 10-week pretty much boot camp on how to manage life, how to manage your relationships, how to manage your communication skills, how to you know uh, balance a budget, things of that nature. But it's 10 weeks. It was originally open for young men because I believe that the resurgence of the African-American family starts with the young men. But there was such a cry for the young women as well, we went ahead and extended it for the young, young women as well. Okay. Now, Sherry, what is your role in this? Project now. Well, um, I was recently um, <laughs> titled the director of the public relations for the group, okay. and um, then I'm in charge of facilitating the women's sessions, okay. the young ladies' yeah, sessions. Yes, absolutely. Do you have a manuscript for a typical session that you can share with us now? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the, 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 me? Okay. Absolutely. Um, it, we were, uh, the, the set, when the sessions start, um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a uniform base because we want to get rid of pretty much the labels. This, this, this area is heavy, heavily into labels and tennis shoes. So we want to basically take it back to the basics. So there's a, you know, there's a white t-shirt required for the first five weeks, then there's a black t-shirt for the next five weeks, and then the shoes that they wear need to be a standard shoe. No LeBrons, no Jordans, because that's gotten a lot of us in a lot of trouble. Not to say that there's anything wrong with the athletes and their shoes, but we want young people to understand that $200 doesn't just appear for you to get tennis shoes. You have to work and you have to understand that you know these things come with a cost. No, let's, let's, let's stay with that for a second okay. now. Now, I read a recent joke on Facebook where uh, someone had this this uh, a portrait of Michael Jordan and said, hey, you know, these folks bought the same sneakers again. Yeah. You know, basically the same ones that they bought 30 years ago. Absolutely. I just sold a whole bunch of them again. Now, regardless of what I think personally, mm -hmm. this is what the data is saying. Right. The data is saying that a lot of African Americans are buying these sneakers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, obviously not more than other groups because of numbers, but right. in terms of percentages, right. probably right. higher right. among right. African Americans. Absolutely. The other thing is that we have this phenomenon going on mm -hmm. where people are stabbing, shooting, and killing each other for these sneakers. Right. Now, nowhere in the history of mankind does that make any sense whatsoever. Not, not, a, not an ounce. Nope. So now, is it, is it, whose responsibility is it to address this phenomenon and then try to reverse it so that when LeBron or Michael puts sneakers out there, it's something that we can enjoy. Right. But if we can't enjoy it without it being detrimental to our communities, then we have to get rid of this. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I, I think it's twofold. I think that um, um, you know the the, the LeBrons and Jordans of the world, um, they have to I think be fair in, in what they're asking for these shoes. I don't know if it's a uh, uh, if it's a if it's a Nike thing, it's a Adidas thing, but it's a profit. The, yeah, it's, it's a profit thing, and I, absolutely. But at the same time, they're never going to stop making tennis shoes. We have to reprogram our young people to say, hey. Um, shoes are basic necessities to make us from A to B. I wear Chuck Taylors. I love Chuck Taylors. That's one of the things I enjoy about um, watching our home, one of our hometown heroes, um, Kevin Durant, and his tennis shoes. Like his tennis shoes don't cost over a certain amount, and I want to say he got. Uh, hopefully, he had a part in, in making it that way. But it's an awesome shoe. These guys know that they love Jordans, but they couldn't tell you who actually designed the shoe. So it's really a repro. It has to be a reprogramming of the mind of, the, of our yeah, young people. Yeah. Start thinking outside of the box. Okay. Um, I always tell them to think outside the box. But when you don't know any better, you don't do any better. Absolutely. So I think we have to, like you said, reprogram their minds and, and start showing them and exposing them to something else outside of Jordan and just tennis shoes and right. the shoe game. Everybody wants to talk about, oh, oh, he has mad the shoe game. What exactly is shoe game? You know what? What is that? All right, folks. We want to take a station break. Rolling grounds. Show, be back at you in a few minutes.
Right. Welcome back to my show. Shooting here from the Society Lounge in Silver Spring, Maryland. Right. Sherry Cook, Tawan Gales. Tawan, as we were going to break, we were talking about the children and their purchasing of certain items. However, many of the children are the ones purchasing it. So I know that you have this life program for the young men and young women. However, when they go back home or they go back into their communities, a lot of times they're around folks who idolize Rims and Tims right. as much as anybody else right. in the world. Right. So now, what, ha what are you or have you started thinking about how to integrate other elements in their lives into some of this training so that when they go back home or they get back into their neighborhood, re-enter their lives, they can take some of that with them and not run into as much resistance. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, I've, I've thought about just that. Um, I think it's important that one, we get to the parents, um, especially the children that are gonna be involved with the program. We can um, definitely do different things for the parents to include them in what we're doing on a weekly basis so that they'll understand what we're focusing on so that they can also be a backup to assist us to make sure that, you know, they're enforcing some of the things that we're trying to encourage the kids to do. And, and, and to piggyback what she said, um, each each young man and young woman will have a, a, a journal that they will be given to keep a record of uh, things and activities and certain research assignments so that they can reinforce it when they're home. Their parents, will, we're, we're gonna act, we're gonna have a meeting at the beginning of, the beginning of each session which include the parents as well, because it's a partnership. It's not just them coming yeah. to the program, it's us extending to them like, hey, we want you to be a part of this too. We don't want you to just send them for, for 10 weeks and then you go out and buy them Jordans again. Right. That, that's been part of the problem, is that the, the parents, and un unfortunately it's been a lot of the mothers, because, they, because they're single mothers, they've been pacifying the situation a little bit. So there is definitely a, a meeting portion with the mothers in the beginning yes. that the says, beginning. hey, we're about to change some things up and we're gonna need your help. So. Funding. Funding. <laughs> funding, funding, funding. Uh, we will be uh, hosting uh, a few fundraisers here. We have a, a, a fundraiser team that we're uh, about to sit down and, and start to really um, you know, get our nose to the grindstone and, and start to you know, see what kind of money we can drum up. Um, we're definitely uh, gonna start doing grants and things of that nature, or start applying for grants and things of that nature so that we can uh, start to get things going. Now, collaboration, are you going to be working with or are you working with other entities as you start this project? I think that's in, important. In a month or so. Ab Definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I, I currently live in Mayfair, Mayfair Mansion Apartments. Um, I actually grew up in Paradise Apartments as well, so I'm in touch right now with the community leaders in, in both of those facilities. I felt it, um, a heavy need to start it where I live. I asked God about two years ago, I said, God, why am I still here? I have three children, they're growing. I wanna get them you know, in a different place, in a home. And, and God spoke clearly to me, he said, I have, I have a work for you to do here. So now that I'm hearing his voice absolutely clearly, um, and because of my relationship with God, um, I feel, I, I, I've always had a heart for young people, and, I, and, and this situation yeah. definitely came out and rolled out at the right time. Where's home for you, where are you from? I'm from, born and raised in Washington, D.C. What we'll part? Part Northeast DC. Northeast DC. Northeast DC. Went to what high school? Went to Phelps Career Senior High School. Okay. Yep. Now, after you left Phelps, you spent a couple years in college. Then you went into the military. What branch of the military? Uh, U.S. Army, 82nd Airborne. Hoorah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> U.S. Army, 82nd Airborne. 82nd Airborne. Hoorah. Hoorah. <laughs> now, what principles did you learn in the armed services that are working for you today? Um, my, I have four pillars that, that my life uh, stand upon, which is loyalty. Now I'm going to have you say these pillars rather loudly so everybody hears it. Let's talk about these pillars. All right, let's talk about the first one is loyalty, the second one is honor, the next one is integrity, and the last one is respect. Those are the four pillars that I live my life by. You must have loyalty when you're, talk, when you're talking and dealing with your family, you're dealing in business. There must be some loyalty there. You must have some honor there. You must have some integrity there and in in, in must have a lot of respect definitely for yourself. But when, once you have respect for yourself, then you'll have respect for others. It makes it so much easier. Now, let's deal with this loyalty sort of integrity thing. Now, I don't know what you've experienced, but the moment I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur, <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So the people who love you 
first of all, want to save you from that heartache. Right. <laughs> all right. Then if they can't save you from that heartache of trying to go into business for yourself, eventually, sometimes they start to resent you for doing it. Mm -hmm. So some of the very people that you're looking for moral support right. and sustenance and a pat on the back, right. they're giving you something a little bit differently sometimes. Right, absolutely. So now when you talk about this loyalty, you talk about this integrity, you talk about this respect, unless you live a different life than the rest of the entrepreneurs out there mm -hmm. who are getting started, <clears throat> there's a challenge mm -hmm. when you step out on this kind of faith and get involved with these kinds of endeavors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tell me a little, tell us about some of the challenges you've had, the relationships, et cetera, as you move into this genre of your life. Okay, well, I mean, I, I'm married early and pretty much often. Um, I'm married three times, divorced three times, three kids by three different women. Um, you know, just trying not to be, try, trying to be so unlike my father that I ended up kind of indirectly hitting that vein anyway because you want to do a thing doesn't mean you know how to do a thing. So the, the union of marriage is a beautiful thing. Um, it just takes the, the, the right two people to have the right energy and all the things of that nature. Um, the way I see it is I hit enough potholes in the road to help another young brother or young sister say, hey, I really need to take the time, slow down, get my own self together so that when, you know, I, when I come together with that mate, I'm a whole person, he's a whole person, she's a whole person, and then you can join us that union. So the, I take the examples of the, I guess you could call them for the lessons in my life, and I apply them to the program because I want, I want young people to be successful early. Okay, now, what you just told me is pretty deep. Yeah. So, what are the life lessons you learned through these relationships and then moving forward? How do you balance it yourself? Mm -hmm. How do you recommend others? But most especially, you're getting ready to spend a lot of time trying to help develop the lives of others. Mm -hmm. And I know in scripture, Book of Timothy and some other books, they talk about right. what kind of man is supposed to lead, what right. kind of man is supposed to be a minister, a teacher, mm -hmm. a principal. And, and that's a heck of a call. Absolutely. So when we return, we're gonna talk about why you, why now, right. and where we're going. All right. All right, I'm gonna give you a chance to knock that out the park. Okay? All right, all right. All right, folks, Rolling Grimes Show. We'll be back to you in a few minutes. Thank you. tongue is actually starting to wrap around inside my mouth, but you know what? I couldn't think of any other place I'd rather be right so now than right here with these jokes. So now, I have said that, to one, there's a heck of responsibility when you start putting on those boots Absolutely. of general, general friendship, and you're going to try to lead others, especially young folks, and their mamas and dads. So now, what is this calling that you have? Why you, why now? Why me? Why now? Um, my relationship with God has been has been such a strong one. He's always been faithful to me. Um, I just recently um, uh, joined the church, um, God Standard Ministry, which is located in Clinton, Maryland. It's an awesome, awesome uh, uh, church of church of worship. And um, that relationship, the, the relationship that they've shown me has been. Absolutely outstanding. Um, they are leading by example. Um, God's standard ministries is just a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Um, the things that I do to balance out my life is I see God. I pray. I pray before I do any and everything. Um, I, I try to balance it out from spending time with my family. That's extremely important. My three beautiful children. Um, and just, and just being faithful to the things that I know. I'm, I'm extremely excited about this, this mentorship program that I get to help some young people not make some of these things happen. 
Sherry, now how did you come across this big old hunk of thick brother here to get involved with this program? You know, we were, we, that comes from a conversation we had earlier with the nutrition, never mind. <laughs> we were doing some, some, some uh, scale comparisons. So how did you hook up with the big fella? Well, I must say that the internet is, uh, social media is truly a blessing. Um, I was. Um, so you say? I mean, for no, some. <laughs> but um, I was on Facebook. Uh, I'm not really sure how. I don't know who was the friend of the yeah, somebody friend. friended somebody. Somebody friended someone, and um, and one day I saw his post that he was uh, starting his mentoring mentoring program. Um, not sure, but um, a certified life coach. Um, I've been doing um, coaching for the last three years. Coach Cook. So, <laughs> so when I saw his post, it just um, warmed my heart, and I hit him back, and I said, you know what, whatever you need me to do, just let me know, and I'm there. And I've been there ever since. Yeah, every time somebody does that to me on Facebook, I start having stalker kind of resonation. <laughs> so, dude, what was it about how she approached it and made you say, hey, I want to talk to her work with her as opposed to going, click delete the profile? Oh, well, I mean, well, it was, it was once I started my page, um, my page is the Shameless Plug, uh, Life Starts Here men men Mentorship Program. Take the time, say it one more time. Life Starts Here. Mentorship program. You can find us on Facebook. Go to us and like our page. Um, once she, um, you know, like our page, and you just started, you started, started to communicate. Like you know, once you start talking to someone, that energy, you, that energy is there. It's been you know, 100% support, 100% professional the entire time. So I just, I mean, I'm excited. Her and her mom and. Her first name is built the same way my mom's was her first name, so it was like, oh yeah, it's Sherry. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we're like distant cousins. I don't know, if she, and we're actually not that distant. So if you see, if you see the resemblance, you know, from the neck up, you know why. We like, we like, we're like fan family. So, <laughs> um, so you talk about your family, you talk about your children. Now, I must admit. And I'll admit this to all of the people out there that I love, that over a period of time, I spent more time trying to help raise other people's kids right. than I did my own. Right. And I used to always say, well, you know, God will provide for mine. They're in good shape. Right, right. And I have to get out here and I have to stop working with everybody else. Right. Well, I'm at a point now where. I still love everybody else's kids, but I'm not spending time with them. Right, right, right. I'm spending time with my own. And I'm not saying it's this versus that. Right. I just think that it's that season. But looking back over it, every football coach I've ever talked to who make a living out of coaching have said I spent more time raising somebody else's son than I did my own Randy Edsel. And I had a conversation about it, George and Mary. Right. You know, uh, a bunch of other coaches that I've had who are still in the game, mm -hmm. and they talk about how much time they missed with their own children while they're trying to raise these other people's right. sons. Right. Now, what is your perspective on how much time and energy you're going to put into these youngsters, and how do you balance that with the obligations that you have of your own? Right, right. absolutely. Uh, well, the, the mentorship program is being offered um, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings. So the mentorship has me 100% the first half of the week, and the back end of the week is reserved for um, my children and my family. So it just requires balance, it requires uh, steadfastness, and it requires a whole lot of faith uh, to be able to walk out on, on that type of limb. So I, you know, I'm, I'm extremely appreciative that God blessed me with this opportunity. So you also understand that as we know, gravitate to you, and their parents, they become more dependent on you. That that back half of the week, your phone will stop ringing, you start getting text messages, right, right. and every time somebody has a hangnail, you know, or right. some other issue or problem, the right. barber cut their hair wrong, right. and you're gonna get a phone call, and you're gonna be asked to come in and put that fire out. Right. Now, I'm not saying that you should, should, that you will or won't. Right. All I'm asking you is, as you get into that venture. Mm -hmm. um, what mechanisms do you have in place to be able to assist them mm -hmm. so that nothing catastrophic or mitigate something catastrophic from happening, right. but still be able to spend some time doing you and yours? Right. Absolutely. Right. I, think, um, I think it's important, I think that you 
probably thought about this, but um, they do, I do have a cutoff time. I have my family. I have a family. I give 100% to, to life. Start to the mentoring program. And um, have an uh, email address set up for them to get there on. It almost, it seems like it's easier for a woman to have that cutoff. Have have cutoff that, time. It seems like it's yeah. easier for mothers to have that cutoff point than the fathers. Have you noticed that? It's, it's, it's easy for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's easy for me. I mean, it, 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 here again, it requires balance. We, we, want, we want them. We want these. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying that my observation right, 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 right. over the years right. has been, you know, when, when, when mama time with the kids, mama cuts stuff off. Right. Fathers have a tendency, men have a tendency to stay around a little longer and keep putting those fires up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really... I mean, the program that that's what the program is here for is to teach them how to be independent thinkers and to solve these situations on their own. We need to know what's, you know, what's a cold blue, what's a cold red, what's a cold exactly. this. And these young men and young women are given scenario based problems that they have to solve and figure okay. out. Okay, so they won't have a pacifier instead of a All right, good enough for me. Hey, <laughs> folks. Once again, Tawan Gales, Taiwan Gales, and Sherry Cook. What's the name of the organization one more time? It is Life Starts Here Mentoring Program. LIFE Starts Here Mentoring Program. Rolling Bubble Grimes, once again, signing off from the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. I want to bid you adieu, and God bless. We'll be in touch soon. Thank you. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you. All right, the butterflies are gone. I'm, I'm way past fatigue over there laughing. I'm, I'm way past fatigue. My tongue is actually starting to wrap around inside my mouth. But you know what? I couldn't think of any other place I'd rather be right so now than right here with these jokes. So now, I have said that. To one, there's a heck of responsibility when you start putting on those boots of general, general friendship and you're going to try to lead others, especially young folks, and their mamas and dads. So now, what is this calling that you have? Why you, why now? Why me, why now? Um, my relationship with God has been has been such a strong one. He's always been faithful to me. Um, I just recently um, uh, joined the church, um, God's Standard Ministry, which is located in Clinton, Maryland. It's an awesome, awesome uh, uh, church, of, church of worship. And um, that relationship, the, the relationship that they've shown me has been absolutely outstanding. Um, they are leading by example. Um, God's standard ministries is just a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Um, the things that I do to balance out my life is I seek God. I pray. I pray before I do any and everything. Um, I, I try to balance it out with spending time with my family. That's extremely important. I have three beautiful children. Um, and just, and just being faithful to the things that I know. I'm, I'm extremely excited about this, this mentorship program that I get to help some young people not make some of these mistakes. Sherry, sure. now how did you come across this big old humble, thick brother here to get involved with this program? You know, we were, we, that comes from a conversation we had earlier with the nutrition of the mind. We were doing some, some, some uh, scale comparisons. So how did you hook up with the big call? Well, I must say that the internet is, uh, social media is truly a blessing. Um, I was... Um, so you say? I mean, for no, some. <laughs> but um, I was on Facebook. Uh, I'm not really sure how. I don't know who was the friend of a friend. Yeah, somebody friended somebody. Somebody friended someone. And, um, and one day I saw his post that he was uh, starting his mentoring program. Um, not sure, but I'm a certified life coach. Um, I've been doing um, coaching for the last three years. Coach Cook. So, <laughs> so when I saw his post, it just um, warmed my heart, and I hit him back, and I said, you know what? Whatever you need me to do, just let me know, and I'm there. And I've been there ever since. Yeah, every time somebody does that to me on Facebook, I start having stalker kind of resonation. <laughs> so, dude, what was it about how she approached it and made you say, hey, I want to talk to her work as opposed to going, 
Clinton did not the profile. Oh well, I mean, well, it was it was once I started my page, um, my page is the Shameless Plug. Uh, Life starts here, men, men, mentorship program. Take your time, say one more time. Life starts here. Mentorship program. You can find us on Facebook. Go to us and like our page. Um, once you, um, you know, like our page, and you just started, you started, know, started to communicate. Like, you know, once you start talking to someone, you can feel that energy is there. It's been, you know, 100% support, 100% professional the entire time. So I just, I mean, I'm excited. Her and her mom and. Her first name is built the same way my mom spells her first name. So it was like, oh, yeah, this oh, is yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, Well, I mean, we're like distance cousins. I don't know. If and we're actually not that distant. So if you see if you see resemblance, you know, from the neck up, you know why. We're like, we're like, we're like fan family. So, yeah. um, so you talk about your family, you talk about your children. Now, I must admit, and I'll admit this to all of the people out there that I love, that over a period of time, I spent more time trying to help raise other people's kids right. than I did my own. Right. And I used to always say, well, you know, God will be fine for mine. They're in good shape. Right, right. And I have to get out here and I have to stop working with everybody else. Right. Well, I'm at a point now where I still love everybody else's kids, but I'm not spending time with them. I'm spending time with my own. And I'm not saying it's this versus that. I just think that it's that season. But looking back over every football coach I've ever talked to who make a living out of coaching have said I spent more time raising somebody else's son than I did my own Randy Edsel. And I had a conversation about it, George and Larry. Right. You know, uh, a bunch of other coaches that I've had who are still in the game, mm -hmm. and they talk about how much time they missed with their own children while they're trying to raise these other people's right. sons. Right. Now, what is your perspective on how much time and energy you're going to put into these youngsters, and how do you balance that with the obligations that you have of your own? Right, absolutely. I love the, the mentorship program will be offered. Um, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings. So the mentorship has me 100% the first half of the week, and the back end of the week is reserved for um, my children and my family. So it just requires balance, it requires uh, steadfastness, and it requires a whole lot of faith uh, to be able to walk out on, on that type of limb. So I, you know, I'm, I'm extremely appreciative that God blessed me with this opportunity. So you also understand that as we just gravitate to you, and their parents, they become more dependent on you. That that back half of the week, your phone will stop ringing, you start getting text messages, right, right. and every time somebody has a hangnail, you know, or right. some other issue or problem, the right. barber cut their hair wrong, right. you're gonna get a phone call, and you're gonna be asked to come in and put that fire out. Right. Now, I'm not saying that you should, should, that you will or won't. Right. All I'm asking you is, as you get into that venture. Mm -hmm. um, what mechanisms do you have in place to be able to assist them mm -hmm. so that nothing catastrophic or mitigate something catastrophic from happening, right. but still be able to spend some time doing you and yours? Right. Absolutely. I think, um, I think it's important. I think that you probably thought about this but um, they do. I do have a put off time. I have my family. I have a family. I give a hundred percent to to life starts with the mentoring program and um, have an email address set up for them to hit on. It always, it always seems like, like it's easier for women to have that cut off. Have have cut that, off it seems like it's easier for mothers to have that cut off point than the fathers. Have you noticed that? It's, it's, it's easy for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's easy for me. I mean, it, 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 here again. It requires balance. We, we want, we want them. We want these. I'm not people. saying what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just saying that my observation right, 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 right. over the years right. has been, you know, when 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 mama time with the kids, mama cuts stuff off. Right. Fathers have a tendency. Men have a tendency to stay around a little longer and keep putting those fires up. Nah, it's it's really. I mean, the program that that's what the program is here for is to teach them how to be independent thinkers and to solve these situations on their own. We need to know what's, you know, what's a cold blue, what's a cold red, what's a cold this. And these young men and young women are given scenario based problems that they have to solve and figure out. Okay, so they won't have a pacifier instead of a All right, good enough for me. Hey, folks. <laughs>
Once again, to Juan Gales, Taiwan Gales, and Sherry Cook. What's the name of the organization one more time? It is Life Starts Here Mentoring Program. LIFE Starts Here Mentoring Program. Rolling Bubble Grimes, once again, signing off from the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. I want to bid you adieu, and God bless. We'll be in touch soon. Thank you.